So Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of God dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And I just love this because I love the first part that says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And when I hear that, you know, I'm just thinking, oh, there were so many words of Christ. There's so many words of God um, that are just so rich with wisdom and so rich with just good things that it just makes me want to know more of them. You know, do you guys ever feel that way? Um, we were at a prayer meeting a couple days ago. I was just trying to think what day it is. <laughs> um, and somebody got up and, and in this time, um, he exhorted us to memorize the word of God. And he, they were basically encouraging us like, what if the internet went down and um, you couldn't get a Bible app? Or what if for some horrible reason you couldn't find a Bible and you only could go on what you know right now in God's word? Would that be enough? That's a question that I, it was good to kind of to pose, pose out to all of us. It's like, wow, do I have enough of God's word in my heart? And just like in, in Colossians, that verse, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And that reminded me of one of my other favorite verses in the Bible was 2 Peter um, 1. Really, the first chapter of 2 Peter is amazing. Uh, but verse 2 in particular says, according um, as his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue, whereby, verse 4, we are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And... He starts off, you know, in verse 2, Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of, the, of God and the, Jesus our Lord. And so through this journey of reading the Bible and understanding what the Bible is all about, there are these particular verses in here that help us, guide us, uh, navigate us into life. And it says here, that they're called exceeding great and precious promises. And as we learn them and as we um, begin to see what these are, uh, we get to be fortified and strengthened in our walk. And as it says, we'll be partakers of the divine nature. So what does that mean, divine nature? Well, it means the nature that we're going to have in our glorified body. It's divine. It's god breathe in um in us because what happens is when you line up your emotions and your mind um, to the word of God, you kind of look different <laughs> than what the world says that we should do, should do, right? So when the world's all panicking and freaking out ah, in crisis and the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but with everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, is going to be guarding your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. So as a world is going crazy, as a world is panicking, we're praying, right? We're thanking God. We're supplicating to him for our life. And then as we do that, we're realizing who we're praying to, how huge and how supreme he is. And then he, through the Holy Spirit, floods us with his peace. And so the world will be like, why aren't you panicking? Why aren't you doing that? And you're like, well, because God has given me his peace. And see, these are what these exceedingly great and precious promises are, is God's word to us for life. And you think, Vanessa, is there really promises in there for life and godliness? Oh my goodness, the Bible is so full of them. In front, 
in fact, I should say, last year uh, we took a group um, on a little retreat to Catalina. And that's this is what I was talking about, is God's exceedingly great and precious promises. Promise being what God has said he's going to do and um, and things for our lives. And so I started to write out, I took from a few um, resources that I have, and I put together a list of just different promises or different scriptures that help navigate us through life. So I have it on my website. It's called Sweet Agape, so S-W-E-E-T-A-G-A-P-E.com, and under home it says PDFs. There's a PDF there you can print out. And it's just a cluster of scriptures in regards to life. How about anger, for instance? James 1, 19 says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Right? So what does that have to do? Well, it gives us how we are supposed to live as Christians. We're supposed to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to to our anger. So if we're not, if we're um, quick to speak, quick to anger, and slow to hear, well, you know, we're not we're not acting in that divine nature. We're not <laughs> acting in the Holy Spirit, right? We're acting in what we call our flesh, our our human hum, humanity, <laughs> that nature. <laughs> There's nature of just uh, our flesh and just natural, and then we have the Holy Spirit. And God's nature that comes and lives and abides in us. So anyway, the more we live according to what God says to do, uh, the more peace that we'll have, right? Well, there's scriptures in here about anxieties, bad habits, bitterness, depression. What do you do about enemies? How about coveting? Um, what about fear? Um, I love this one. I'm going to give this to you because it's so beautiful. It's Psalms. Uh, 34 4 it says I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears do you know that's one of the best ways to counteract fear is seeking God because whatever you're fearful of when you start seeking the Lord and you start understanding his character then you realize who's really on your side who's going before you who is surrounding you who's walking through this stuff and then fear starts to leave because God's love will just pour over us on how much he loves us and how much he's with us. That we're like, wait a second, God, God's with me. I don't need to fear anything. And in fact, I've heard it said there's over 365 verses that say do not fear. And um, in fact, in Revelation, John, this is kind of a side note, which this is really kind of cool, is the disciple John who walked with Jesus, who ate with Jesus, even leaned on Jesus's um, chest during the upper room, the, the meal that they had before he was crucified, um, God actually allowed him to go up into, Revel up into heaven and see the end time event. So that's the book of Revelation. He writes about it. And one of the very first things he, after he sees Jesus in his glorified state, see, John got to see him in his humanity. He also got to see him on the Mount of Transfiguration, but he really got to see him glorified when Jesus was in heaven and giving us the account of Revelation. And what's so cool is he like goes, ah, you know, wow, you know, and he, I think he falls down on his face then, but um, I'm not sure of that time. But Jesus, the first thing he says is, um, do not fear. And he says, I that was dead, I am alive. You know, and it was like, wow, it's so cool. And why do I say that? Because John um, got to see God in just an amazing way. And so, why did I say that? I don't know. Oh, because it, <laughs> Jesus says, do not fear. So that that's for us today, you know, do not fear. Anyway, you guys, I think you could get just encouraged about there's forgiveness, there's grief, there's all the way things about temptations and loneliness and prayer. So if you can, just jump on over there. I just created this little... Um, like little booklet kind of thing. So it's kind of made in that way, but you can look at the PDFs. But the reason why I talk about this is because um, after being encouraged to memorize more scriptures, I see scriptures as tools. And we could have this whole, like my mom, she loves constructions and she loves tools. And so I go into her garage 
and she's got every little tool for everything. I mean, I'll call her and say, Mom, I gotta do this, and she's like, okay, I got a tool for that. <laughs> and I love that. But when I go in her garage and I look at the tools, I am clueless <laughs> on what to do with them. Now, she's had a project all the days of my life, and I used to help her, you know, and I got out of helping her, actually, I got out of working so much because I needed a break, so I'd make lunch. <laughs> so that was what I was good about, making lunch. But anyway, when I look at her tools, I don't know how to operate them. I'm like intimidated by them. And sometimes with scripture, sometimes we might hear a scripture or read a scripture, but we might not understand what is this tool for? Like, how do we use them? And so I want to encourage you guys with the promises of God. Some, some of them are conditional. They're if and then. If you do this, then this will happen. Some of them are just um, commands for our humanity. Like I said, uh, David also used to command his soul. He'd say, why are you down, downcast within me, oh my soul? Hope in God. You know, he would talk to us all. Hope in God. Like, get your eyes back on the Lord. And other ones are just, um, just wonderful, um, just truths to have in your life. I mean, they're just plentiful for things of, the, of life. But anyway, what I, what I love to do lately is take a scripture that speaks to me and personalize it. And I make it my tool. <laughs> you know, I take it off and I put it in my tool belt and make it my own. And I start to navigate the tools in, um, in the scriptures in like tools. And it says, um, let me give you an example of what I do. Well, let's take the verse. It's my grandma's favorite verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So there's some action words in there. Trust, um, lean not, acknowledge. So those are action words that I actually have to do in order for that promise to be fulfilled. Okay, so... So what I do is I make it my own and I'll say, Lord, I will trust you with all of my heart and I will not lean to my own understanding, but in all my ways, I will acknowledge you and I know you're going to direct my path. So now I personalize it. Now I'm owning it. Now, um, another one I always say, because the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So I'll say, God, there's no weapon that shall form against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Because that's my heritage. So I take the scriptures and I just apply them. Um, of course, in context, you know, you don't want to be just, um, you got to know the context of the scripture and you want to make sure you're, you're <laughs> it's not like, ah, oh, I'm going to have a million dollars right here. No, it's not like that. But it's, it's taking the scriptures, um, and really owning them for yourself. And then you can understand how to use them more effectively for your life. Uh, what's another one? Let's see. Um, oh, Colossians 3, about your thought life. Okay, how about this one? Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things of earth. So I'll go, Lord, help me to set my mind. I'm going to set my mind on things above, not on things of earth. Lord, I'm going to keep my mind focused on you. Now, it might seem like I'm saying I a lot, but what I'm doing is I'm declaring the scriptures over me. And I'll actually declare them for my family. And and um, it was like Job. Job would go and pray for his family, it says. And, and, and I just want to do that for them, too. And I'm like, Lord, help my son and my, my daughters and my husband set their mind on you. It's like taking that scripture... And we hear it, but we're actually taking another step of action to say, you know what, now I'm going to do it. Now I'm going to apply it. Now I'm going to put it to the test, not to the test, but I'm going to put it strongly. And there's so much power. And so I encourage you guys that when you find a scripture that speaks to you, declare it out loud verbally. Don't just read it out. There is power in the spoken word that comes back into your own mind you're hearing the scriptures and then it goes and transforms and actually can heal it says in hebrews um 4 12 that the word of god is quick and powerful it's sharper than any two-edged sword see it pierces right to where you need to hear it between the soul and the spirit and the joint and marrow and is in the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so it's really there to encourage you, to equip you, to strengthen you, to um, 
rebuke as well. And so there's places in our life that we need um, correction, and it does that too. So be encouraged today. If you um, are just having a hard time, find a promise or find a scripture and hold on to it. Speak it out over you and your family, and you'll find strength there. So I just wanted to give you just a little encouragement that we have these great, exceedingly great and precious promises that when we are doing them and we're living according to the word, um, we're actually partaking of the divine nature that we will eventually have when we get heaven inside. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys. Be encouraged. Hold on to the scripture and hide that word in your heart because the Bible says then we won't sin against him because we'll just know him and we'll know his word. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing. So blessings to you guys. Have a great night.